Broadband internet service is a vital part of our nation's infrastructure, ranking alongside electricity and the interstate highway system in its impact on education, health, and business development. But the benefits of the digital revolution aren't being felt equally. Now an effort is underway to provide those who live outside large metropolitan areas with much needed access to the information superhighway. Compared to the rest of the world, the United States suffers from a critical lack of broadband service. According to the Federal Communications Commission, about 28% of rural areas still don't have high-speed internet access, compared to just 3% in urban centers. President Barack Obama has outlined a plan to make broadband available to at least 98% of Americans within five years, noting that while 90% of South Koreans enjoy high-speed access to the information highway, only about 65% of U.S. residents can say the same. When it comes to high-speed internet, the lights are still off in one-third of our households. One out of every three households in America don't have that same access. For millions of Americans, the railway hasn't showed up yet. To improve high-speed access, the state launched the Oklahoma Broadband Initiative in 2009. The initiative's first phase began with creation of a comprehensive map of broadband coverage in Oklahoma. It's our before picture, and it's a very useful thing to have. You always, as often as you can, you always want to know how things look before you got started on something. That's how you measure progress, is, is you've got to put some kind of a mark on the ruler to begin with and say, well, this is where we started, and then one year, two years, three years down the line, this is where we're at. Alex Pettit, the state's chief communications officer, says the results of the mapping project bear out what many already suspected. While urban areas are well served, it's a different story in rural Oklahoma. We're seeing either there's no broadband service available or that there's a limited number of offerings and types of offerings that are available. So there are places where there's a broadband offering, but it's only through one carrier or one provider. The lack of high-speed access in rural areas comes as no surprise to James Deaton, Chief Technology Officer at OneNet, the state's official communications network. Well, the bulk of the population is, you know, very concentrated, you know, in, in certain areas, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Lawton. Once you get beyond those areas, you're, you're, you're looking at 20% of the population remaining. And so uh, the industry only wants to build to areas where they can, they can recover the costs. Taking advantage of $74 million in federal stimulus funds, Oklahoma launched the second phase of the initiative in 2010, a project to establish broadband systems at anchor institutions such as public schools, hospitals, and universities. The Oklahoma Community Anchor Network, or OCAN, will employ about 1,100 miles of state-owned fiber optic line. To supplement that, more than 1,000 miles of additional fiber optic cable is being installed along interstates and highways in 35 counties, creating a sort of loop that will reach almost 90% of the state's population. Off of that loop, it is hoped that we will be able to encourage carriers, either local carriers like the Pine telephones and the Panhandle telephones and, and what have you, or even other carriers who aren't in those areas today to begin to provide broadband services. The OCAN project, which is expected to be completed by the end of this year, won't actually offer broadband access to individual homes and businesses. Its primary purpose is to build this middle mile infrastructure so that we can help connect those companies that are serving uh, the residences and businesses in those areas that they, that they serve help them serve them better by getting them back to the higher bandwidths that are available uh, in, the, in the larger metropolitan areas. Deaton says when finished, OCAN will greatly expand infrastructure capacity, improving rural access to public safety, education, and health care services. Our end goal is to provide a, quite a bit of additional bandwidth, uh, in some cases maybe 100 times more bandwidth uh, to an area and uh, facilitate uh, educational and medical opportunities. The medical profession in Oklahoma is already taking advantage of the opportunities provided by broadband access, as evidenced by the growth of telemedicine. Candace Shaw, director of telemedicine at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, 
says the technology is breaking down geographical barriers between doctors and their patients in remote rural areas. With the technology, we can virtually take the specialists, the health care providers, right to the patient in their rural setting, in their primary care doctor's office, in their local clinic. We have over 400 locations in the state that are either receiving or providing telemedicine and telehealth services. The spectrum of clinical services that are offered across the state range from radiology to cardiology, both adult and pediatric, endocrinology, uh, diabetes management, cancer, Dr. Kenneth Copeland is Chief of Pediatric Diabetes Services at Children's Hospital in Oklahoma City. He uses telemedicine to see patients at a clinic operated by the Choctaw Nation in Tallahena. The advantages, of course, are that it's 200 miles away to this particular remote site, and, uh, and that's several hours of driving each way. So it's very, very difficult for us. Advantages for us would be the fact that this is much, much more convenient and not having to spend those hours on the road getting there and getting back. Certified diabetes educator Amy Trent says plans are in the works to expand that service to other rural areas of the state. Some patients live in McAllister, some patients live in Idabel, Hugo, Atoka, lots of different areas, and so they have to drive to Tallahena to see us. Um, that may be a shorter drive than driving to Oklahoma City to see us, but it's still a drive. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at expanding our telemedicine sites to have one in McAllister, one in the Idabel Hugo area, and then another one, I believe, in Atoka. Telemedicine costs have increased in recent years, but Shaw points out there are resources available to health care providers. Oklahoma is one of only a few states that has state funds available. The Univer Oklahoma Universal Service Fund that is administered by the Oklahoma Corporation Commission. So anyone that qualifies can apply for having their telemedicine line funded by this resource. That fund, which appears as a fee on telephone and cell phone bills, was established in 1997 to help pay for free internet access lines to public schools, universities, and rural nonprofit health care clinics. In 2009, cost of providing access totaled $28 million, an amount which skyrocketed to $52 million in 2010, with telemedicine cost accounting for about $19 million of that figure.